since the news uh, broke, I'm, a, I'm on West Coast time, so I came back from a Shabbat dinner on Friday night, and my phone was already blowing up from friends in Israel saying that something terrible had happened. Like so many other people, we're used to hearing terrible news out of Israel, a rocket attack, uh, you know, an escalation from Gaza. But as Jonathan was saying, I'm not sure for people who who aren't paying close attention that they understand the scale of what has just occurred here. This is the biggest massacre of the Jewish people since the Holocaust. But unlike the Holocaust, in which the Germans tried to hide their war crimes, it took the Allies, remember, years to uncover all that the Nazis did. Here we have people streaming it on real time, on TikTok, on live stream, and on Instagram. A message just went out to parents all over the state of Israel begging them to delete the apps from their children's phones because Hamas has warned that it is going to live stream the execution of hostages and they don't want their children seeing it. I want to tell you just a few stories of some of the people that I've been speaking to in Israel, people who are desperate for their family members to come home. I spoke yesterday morning to Shaked Haran. Shaked is a young mother of two. She is eight months pregnant with her third child. On Saturday morning, she got a WhatsApp message from her father and from her, her, her father on Kibbutz Be'eri. They said that they were in trouble and they said that they loved her. This woman has 10 members of her family currently missing. Her father, her mother, her sister, her brother-in-law, three children, three children under the age of 10 are missing. The reason they know that they have not been killed is a friend of the father's kept calling his phone hundreds and hundreds of times. At some point, a voice picks up in Arabic and shouts, hostage, hostage, Gaza, Gilad Shalit. And people will remember that Gilad Shalit is the Israeli prisoner, the soldier that was held for more than four or five years and released in exchange for a thousand prisoners, which gives you a sense of how Israel thinks of the importance of a single life. Another mother I spoke to, she asked that she remain anonymous because she is so scared that if her name is in public, it will make the lives of her children who are held hostage even worse. She was on the phone with her boys age 12 and 16 as they hid in a safe room on another kibbutz at the south, a few kilometers from Gaza. And she heard her youngest child, 12 years old, begging not to be taken because he said that he is too young. And she wants the world to know that this is not about an occupation. Israel does not occupy Gaza. It has not occupied Gaza since it pulled out almost a decade ago, ruled by Hamas. She said, these are just teenagers like anyone's teenagers. I am just a mother like any mother who's watching this. I want to tell you about another person, Hirsch Goldberg Pauline. He sent a text message to his parents at 8 a.m., on Saturday morning that said, I love you and I'm sorry. And they haven't heard from him since. They brought a toothbrush and his hair and his pillow to the police station in the hopes that that, that, that they might find him. He was at the music festival like so many others, like Amit Tal. Someone on my team spoke to Amit Tal yesterday. He hid in a grapefruit grove for hours from the terrorist and he dug a hole to shove his feet into the earth because he was scared that they would see his bright shoes. He describes what he saw as a slaughterhouse, that him and his friends were like sheep to be slaughtered. We now know that more than 250 bodies have been recovered from that music festival. The terrorists who filmed themselves came on paragliders with automatic rifles to slaughter and maim and mutilate as many people as possible. Women were raped at that music festival next to the dead bodies of their friends. The woman whose story I began with, Shaked Haran, 10% of that kibbutz where her family members were taken from, 10%, it is the literal meaning of the word decimated, were slaughtered. More than a hundred bodies have been recovered 
from that kibbutz. I want to emphasize what Jonathan was saying before. This is not a situation with two sides, with militants versus an army. This, the two sides in what just happened over the past 72 hours is the side of rapist, barbaric people who we are now learning beheaded babies, beheaded babies versus innocent people. That is what is going on here. And anyone who is found cheering, celebrating in the streets of London or Paris or Berlin or New York or Sydney, where they are screaming, gas the Jews, they are not cheering for the liberation of the Palestinian people in Gaza who languish under the jackboot of Hamas. They are cheering for barbarism and bloodshed. And we should be absolutely clear about what is going on here.